Hi, Adam Vingen here, the Predators beat reporter for the Tennessean with our new columnist, Joe Rexroad. We have just finished covering the Predators Game 7 victory 2-1 against the Anaheim Ducks here at Honda Center. The Predators' first Game 7 and their first Game 7 victory. Now they, they now move on to face the San Jose Sharks. They start that series on Friday in San Jose at the SAP Center. But Joe, your first Predators Game 7, all of our first Game 7, but you know, you've seen these two Predators games, two big wins. What are your initial thoughts on watching this team? I mean, based on my history of covering this team, it's a clear cup contender and it's been all <laughs> along, right? I, I, I don't know. Got in this week, and I've been very impressed in two games, both with just the action in general, but I think the resolve of this team, uh, you know, certainly the bad goal, the, the bad situation late in, in the second period of game six, the way they responded to that, I think they carried that into this game, took the lead, and you know, really absorbed a lot of, of good chances you know, in the last two periods, 28-10 shot differential there. And you have to be impressed with Pekka Rene, of course. Oh, he was unbelievable. He gave up 11 goals in the three losses in games three, four, and five. And you had to wonder if he was going to be the reason why the series fell. Of course, you know, it's not always on the goaltender, but it's such an important position in the playoffs that he was going to take a lot of the blame if the Predators ended up losing the series. but vintage Pecorine performances in game six and seven 62 saves on 64 shots uh just made some fantastic saves late in this game uh, I, I look back to the save he made on Corey Perry late in the game in game six to salvage the uh the lead that the Prairies were holding at the time the one goal lead I mean I wrote before the series began that the pressure of this series was squarely on him I know it's a team sport but goaltending is such an individualized position and it's heavily scrutinized and, and Pecorine in these last two games stood up to the test and was phenomenal and he literally saved them as well as figuratively, figuratively saved them but um, you know when I look at this game we look at the way that they played in the second and third periods as you mentioned 28 to 10 shot discrepancy Pecorine told me after the game that he didn't I called it an onslaught in the question he, t he said he disagreed yeah. with that because he thought the Predators did a good job defensively. Like when you watch them in that second and third period, what, what did you see that allowed them to, to handle that? Well, that's the thing. I, I thought they still played good defense all night, and, and I, I think as he pointed out, I mean, most of he, he got a good look at most of those shots, right? But, you know, Anaheim just found a way to, especially late, really <laughs> threw everything at him. But I thought that, you know, they took away space pretty well tonight, and um, yeah, I think also once it's two nothing, of, of course the Ducks are, are, are gonna are gonna change their approach, and I think the Predators did too. I mean, I loved the uh, four corners, uh, you know, <laughs> delayed college penalty. basketball. Yeah, there, right? right, right, right. Um, you know, killing more than a minute there. They, you know, I don't know. I, I thought that the Predators got conservative, but I suppose that's what you do when it's two nothing after one period, right? In right, a game like this. Yeah, yeah, and. They got that first period lead, that 2 nothing lead, because of two goals from what people in Nashville are starting to call playoff Colin Wilson. He had five points tied with Shea Weber for the series lead in seven games. Not quite the five-goal outburst that he had against Chicago last year, but a fantastic goal to open the scoring early in the game, taking advantage of a defensive miscue by Anaheim with a beautiful backhand breakaway. I mean, he always seems to rise to these big occasions. I remember before game one, that's what a lot of the conversation was. Is, is Colin Wilson going to show up? And Peter Laviolette said he was playing well at the end of the season, even if the results weren't there. The line had been playing well with Fisher and Arvidsson, and they played well in this series. And you know, they need Colin Wilson to step up like they did, and, and he certainly delivered. And Paul Gostad, an unsung hero in game six and seven, scored the second goal in game seven and, and was on the first power play early in game six and threw a big right check up at the net, right, right up right at the there. net you know this this could be his last hurrah he's an unrestricted free agent 34 years old not sure if what his career is going to take him after this but i mean he's a veteran presence on this team and he's been put in some big spots in these two games and outside of being the typical defensive zone specialist that he is and he's handled it really well and you need those performances from your big players but that's it for us here in Anaheim. I am on my way to San Jose tomorrow with game one starting Friday, I believe 9.30 Central start. 
uh, back in Nashville for that game. Game two will be Sunday at the SAP Center before the series goes back to Nashville for games three and four at Bridgestone Arena, Tuesday and Thursday. Both games start at 8 Central. Joe will be there with me. I'm off to San Jose, but thank you so much for following us in this series, and the Predators move onward. Second round starts Friday.